This is him. In the early 70s. I'll never forget what he said to me in front of that house around 1993. And that's the beginning of this. Morrison came here the same reason you did. The poetry. He awoke. He wrote. Opened the curtains. Watched six or seven pelicans. Graceful. Sweeping over the Pacific. Terrific. He wrote. Why go anywhere? And he didn't, save select cafes and the methadone clinic, Mr. Vistonist. He lived alone in a rent control bungalow and wrote poems on an antique Smith Corona. He drew poisonous arachnids on the backs of envelopes and scored dope. He was one of the most ignored poets in America, according to the Los Angeles Free Press. Antonin Artaud meets Edgar Allan Poe in a morphine drip dream in distress. He had a Zapatista street sweeper mustache, smoked crack in Pyrex glass, and signed books for all of his favorite waitresses and baristas. He fiended for one in particular from Sweden. He called himself a mistake, worse than an abortion, and reportedly got his first hit of acid from Jim Morrison. He said it was a purple wafer the size of a lifesaver's. Should he break it in half? No, man. Take the whole thing. <laughs> they were less than friends, more than acquaintances at UCLA. Then Jim got famous. What have you been doing? Just making money. What have you been doing? Just making music. What have you been doing? Just making candles. What have you been doing? He called himself a blunt instrument. Worse than a candelabra. And reportedly got his fourth hit of acid from a psychedelic Sinatra. He said it was a sugar cube from a Woodstock guru. Should he break on through? <laughs> no, man. Go to the emergency room. <laughs> they were less than friends, more than acquaintances at UCLA. Then Jim got famous. What have you been doing? Just making money. What have you been doing? Just making music. What have you been doing? Just making candles. What have you been doing? And the lids he got from the shaman were not exactly chronic. Mr. Vice the Honest, stay alive. He had short-term memory loss and a long reach stapler. <laughs> he typed on the platen when he ran out of paper. He drew inspiration for a second publication from a fascist dictator who painted roses as a teenager. Schizoid is such a swinging way. He corresponded with William Watling and went fishing on Convict Lake. He kept burning in water, drowning in flame. And he heard from Bukowski Endurance is more important than truth. He learned from Bukowski. Solitude is key. Avoid all groups. And he discerned from Bukowski. 
Dark urine means not enough fluids. <laughs> Mr. Vice Honest, stay alive. And Bukowski was enslaved by the left-hand margin he raved, while he was free to move about the page, zigzag, stagger the lines, return, return, return again and again and return again. Listen. Aphrodite suggested he try psychiatry, the cure, not the practice. She had too many honeys, he had too many habits. And he asked her back to his shack and she laughed at him. One night was enough on her king-size mattress. She met a musician and moved to Manhattan. Clean oven, dirty kitchen, meet poet Steve Richmond. I know you disliked parties and postal holidays and Jack London's second wife. You said you slammed great novelists because you couldn't create what they did and you were right. You said you could not yet describe the black bird in the green tree and saw demons salute crows with bones for wings. Dear Mr. Vice Honest, you had an aversion to Russian fur hats, or at least one in particular, from an American poet. Beat Generation Publisher and Proprietor of Paperbacks on Columbus Ave. Listen by Steve Richmond. Listen, we sacrifice the fame. Stick to poetry. Make a move into prose. And somehow we've lost that certain touch. That shoe in my face, it's the novelist's fame. That short story writer is only a short story writer. Listen, we stick to poetry. We didn't want all that false publicity, all that crap to build a legend. We had a few hobbies. Hobbies save our lives. We had a TV. We had a record player. We had a dozen healthy plants. Listen by Steve Richmond. Mr. Vice Honest. Mr. Vice Honest. Mr. Vice Honest. Superb, he wrote. He fed birds wild seed. When his washer broke, he filled it with dirt and planted a fern. He bet on boxing. Hagler over Hearns. Hagler won in the third. Marvelous, he wrote. He yearned for two paid weeks in Europe. But why go anywhere? His personal credo? have no living heroes. Thanks for listening.